Hallelujah. Turn to uh, Mark, the fourth chapter, please. Mark, the fourth chapter. Now, uh, while you're turning there, let me say this, just to give you the, the prelude to this morning's uh, message. I was down here at the church in the sanctuary on Thursday praying in the Spirit. I prayed for a good while, goodly amount of time in the Spirit. And uh, during that time with the Lord, a few scriptures came up in my heart. I went back to my office and jotted them all down. And uh, I'm excited because I got Sunday morning's message, praise God, on Thursday. So now I can just go through the weekend and just enjoy it, watch football, because I got my message, amen? And so I can just relax now and uh, just enjoy the weekend, you know. And uh, so anyhow, Friday comes along and I'm just enjoying the weekend, you know. Saturday morning, I'm in the kitchen making my protein shake. Yeah, I drink a protein shake. It's chocolate, and it's really good. It's, I had one this morning before I came to church, along with a banana. They were both really good. So I'm fixing my protein shake, and the voice of the Lord came to me. I thought, what does he want? It's a joke. It's a joke. And uh, he, said, he said to me, he said, uh, meet me at the church in the sanctuary. I thought, oh, this sounds pretty serious. I thought, what did I do? What did I do, Lord? <laughs> you know, why is it? When somebody, somebody wants to talk to you, you always think you did something bad. See, our mind tends to go in that negative direction, doesn't it? Hmm? Do you know that all negative habits, negative thought patterns, and all of that come out of the curse? I don't want the curse anywhere near me, do you? Now, Jesus redeemed us from the curse of the law. The Word says that. But the curse is still here. Redemption did not remove the curse from the earth. It removed the curse from our lives. But the curse is still here. And when a born-again Christian chooses to yield to it, it'll operate in their life, won't it? You know, they're redeemed from it. I don't want it near me. I said, I don't want it near me. And so uh, I thought, well, I, I'm going to head down to the church then. He said, he said J just skip your breakfast. <laughs> you know, I had my protein shake and a banana. And I came down here to the church and came in, in the sanctuary here. And... Uh, the Lord and I had a three and a half hour conversation about some things. Say three and a half hours. I mean, I'm down there from, uh, I don't know, from about uh, 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock, something like, some, something like that. No, to, to about 1.30, because Laura came yesterday and cleaned the church. And uh, so I took time out to... Uh, greet her and exchange pleasantries. Hadn't seen her in a while and thank her for her, er for her efforts and all that. Then I went back into the sanctuary and spent time with the Lord. And so uh, after about three and a half hours of my conversation with the Lord, the Lord told me, he said, that's what I want you to preach on. He said, throw the other away. Lord, I spent time developing that you know what I'm saying he said no no he said that's what I want you to preach on and so I said okay okay I want to be obedient how about you I want to be obedient to the Lord what what hey he's the boss I don't always get what I want I just want to obey the Lord and I don't obey the Lord and do what's right because I fear hell I obey the Lord and do what's right because I love him see the other's religion I don't like religion too much, do you? When I got born again, God began to deal with that religious spirit that I had. And it, it came off of me. I said, I had a pastor that would deal with me. And, and he would do it in, in jest, but I knew what he was doing. 
he'd pick on me on purpose, you know, just to, just to see how, if, if that thing was still there, you know. And uh, praise God, he got it out of me, amen. But I got Jesus, praise God. And I got the Holy Ghost, and I got the Word of God, and I got faith, and I got the fire of God, hallelujah, in my belly, hallelujah. Religion won't do that to you, but a relationship will. I said, but a relationship will. And so this morning's message is going to come out of that conversation that I had with the Lord, <laughs> amen. And then uh, last night we're down here, and uh, wasn't... Dr. Brother Radke good last night. I call him, he's my brother. He's got a really humble heart and just, just a good brother. And then uh, I asked Lisa to lead us in prayer. I said, I didn't forewarn you about this. I said, but I'm just going to test you and see if you're ready. And, you know, and she was ready to go. I got a, you know, we've got two Lisa's right here, so I better say Lisa Walk. Amen, we've got two Lisa's. And both of them know the Lord, too. Both of them are precious. Hallelujah. So, hallelujah. So, I had her lead prayer. I didn't tell her nothing about anything. And I got done. I said, well, Lord, she already preached my message. She said, well, go home now. You know. So, but I love it when the Holy Ghost confirms a conversation you had with the Lord. That means God was working. He's working in her. He's working in me. He's working in our church. He's working in you this morning, praise God, to bring forth his plan and his purposes in this time, on this day, and at this hour in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you found Mark chapter 4 yet? If not, just look on with your neighbor by now. Mark chapter 4. My Bible's falling apart here. I got to put it back together. It just indulge me here for just a minute here. Mark chapter 4. On the same day when evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us pass over unto the other side. The master said that. When they sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships or boats, and there arose a great storm of wind. Say, a great storm of wind. So this was not just a pop-up Sunday afternoon thunderstorm. This was a great storm of wind. Now, you ever heard of Rick Renner? I'm not a Greek and Hebrew scholar. He is. <laughs> he, okay. Um, he studied this out in the Greek, and said that it was actually um, a storm of hurricane proportions. So this, this storm came up to take Jesus and his staff out. He wanted to take his, his entire team out. And the waves beat into the ship. Well, that's not just a thunderstorm. Waves came into the ship, into the boat. That's, 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 that's not normal. This is demonic, supernatural storm. So that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they wake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he rose and rebuked the wind. That means he, that means he spoke to it. And said unto the sea, Peace be still. So first he speaks to the to the wind, he did it with the spiritual aspect first. Everything in your life right now, good or bad, comes out of the spirit realm first. So this is spiritual warfare here. He took care of the spiritual first. You follow me there? Then he said to the waves, peace be still. That's the, that's the natural part, see. That, that's the part you can see. You can't see the wind. That's where the demons operate. You can't see demons unless God opens up your, your eyes so you can see in the spirit realm. Then you can see them. Peace be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Now, he could not have said that 
unless they could have done what he did. The fact that he said that means they could have spoke to the wind. They could have spoke to the sea. They chose not to. They were, they were afraid, and they blamed him for it. Don't you care that we're perishing, master? You know. So Jesus here was using his authority against this storm that came up to take him and his team out. Now, where did this authority come from that he used? It came from God, didn't it? it? Came from God. So this great storm that came up was not sent by God as tradition teaches. Otherwise, he would have been rebuking God. He would not rebuke God. Jesus said, I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Well, he would never come against something that God was trying to do. Would he? No. No. He knew, Jesus did, that storm came out of the curse. Storms come out of the curse. Whatever steals, kills, or destroys comes out of the curse. We have authority over the curse. We've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Can you say amen to that? Now, nowhere in the Gospels did Jesus ever tell us to tolerate something the devil is doing. Rebuke it. Resist it. Cast it down or cast it out. But never, ever tolerate it. Can I hear a loud amen? Amen. amen. Now go with me please to uh, Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. Now Jesus here has already gone to the cross, shed his blood and died, was raised from the dead. And now he appears to the disciples. Verse 16 says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. My, my. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power, say all power. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Verse 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them, verse 20, to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. Now, the Greek word for power there in verse 18 means delegated authority. That's what it means. Delegated authority. Well, who was it that delegated this authority to Jesus? It was God, wasn't it? That's where, that's where, the authority, that's where that authority came from. And notice in verse 19, it says, Go ye therefore. What's he saying there? Well, he's turning right around and delegating that authority to us, to the church. Do you see that? He said, therefore you go. So, at the cross, see, how many know that when Adam sinned and committed high treason, he sold us out? Originally, Adam was the God of this world. He wasn't God, but God put him in charge of the world. But then he sold us out, and Satan became the God of this world. Jesus had to go to the cross and buy us back. We had to redeem us back from Satan's domain. Amen? Uh, which he did. And so when he went to the cross, Jesus, and shed his blood, his power and authority was then transferred to the church that he took from the devil that Adam gave to him. Do you see that? Hmm? Woo. Glory to God. So, Jesus is saying here, I, I'm transferring that power to you now. I'm transferring that power to the church. You've got the power. You've got the authority. Glory to God. I don't have it anymore. I don't have it anymore. You have it now. You run this world now. 
When he left, he put, the, he put his disciples in charge. Guess what? They aren't here now. That is the original disciples. So guess what? You're all in charge now. Amen. Say amen to that. Praise the Lord. Now, of course, we have authority, but it won't work unless you use it. You ever heard the expression, use it or lose it? <laughs> well, here's something the Lord said to me while I was down here praying yesterday. He said this to me. He said, if you don't use your authority against the devil, he'll use your authority against you. Many today aren't using their authority. They just walk, they just kind of stumble around, playing around. No, if you aren't using your authority against the devil, it'll be used against you. So make sure you're using your, using your authority against him. <laughs> Amen? And against the curse. Hallelujah. Not against people. Amen? Be mean to the devil, but be sweet to people. Because the pe people are not your enemy. Satan is. He's behind the whole thing. He is the troublemaker. So you point your ammunition toward him. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Now, go with me, please, to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And uh, verse uh, 7. And lest I should be exalted above measure. This is Paul speaking here. Through the abundance of the revelations. Say revelations. There was given unto me a thorn in the flesh. The messenger of Satan. It's above me. Does not say God sent it like tradition teaches. No, it says Satan sent it. Why? To buffet him. Lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice. I mean three times. That it might depart from me. And... Jesus said, no, you got to keep it. Is that what he said? That's not what he said, is it? No. What did he say? He said, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ, that's the anointing, may rest upon me. Now then, let's stop right here. These were demonic harassments sent by Satan to buffet the Apostle Paul. Amen. So they were not sent by God as tradition has taught. These attacks were launched against the Apostle Paul, okay, because he got a hold of some revelation. <laughs> Amen. He was religious for years. He made sure every I was dotted. Every T was crossed. Had Christians persecuted. Held Stephen's coat while he's being stoned to death. I mean, he, he, he was not on God's side for years. But then, while well, on the road to Damascus, he was on his high horse and got knocked off his high horse. You ever got knocked off your high horse? <laughs> And he had a divine encounter with Jesus, the champion of our salvation. And God Almighty took him from religion to revelation. He got set free from all that religion. Learned about grace. Learned about the kindness, goodness of God. Learned about a healing Jesus. Hallelujah. Learned about the blessing. Learn about our redemption in Christ Jesus. Learn about all these things that he didn't know nothing about all the time he was persecuting the church. Amen. So, he sought the Lord about this three times. And the Lord said to him, he didn't say no, he said, you know, you know Jesus said to him, my grace is sufficient for thee. Wow. Did you know? I looked it up. The literal Greek rendering of the word grace is the divine influence upon the heart. 
Grace also means benefit, it means favor, and it means blessing. So what is grace? Grace is empowerment. Amen. Empowerment for what? Empowerment to use your faith. Empowerment to use your authority. Empowerment to use the name of Jesus and walk in victory. When you use your faith and yield to God's grace, you don't get weaker, you get stronger. Hallelujah. Look at verse 10. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for the sake of the anointing, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Hallelujah. You just get stronger, not weaker, when these things happen to you. If you'll use your faith and trust in his grace. Hallelujah. Now, go to Acts, the 16th chapter. And we'll see here where Paul did just that. He used his authority. He used his faith. He didn't just sit back, linger back, and, and not do anything at all about it. Okay, Acts chapter 16 and verse 16. And it came to pass as we went to prayer. That'll get some demons stirred up going to prayer. Huh? That'll get some demons stirred up. A certain damsel possessed with a devil, a spirit, a divination, met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. That's witchcraft. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Well, how many know that what she's saying was right? But there's a wrong spirit behind it. It was not meant to bless Paul. It was meant to harass Paul. And this she did for many days. But Paul, being grieved in the spirit, but being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, what do you say? I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And what happened? He came out the same hour. Moses says he came out. That spirit came out the same hour. Let me ask you a question. Where did the authority the apostle Paul used here come from? It came from God, didn't it? He did exactly what Jesus told him, what told him to do in 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Paul knew who he was. Amen. Paul knew he was in Christ. He knew Christ was in him. He had some revelation. Amen. And he used his authority to stop this harassment. He didn't just put up with it. He didn't just tolerate it. He used his authority and he stopped it. Amen. Now go to 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. And uh, look at verse uh, 17. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, that means women too, that means children too, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Well, you're in Christ if you're born again. Amen. Praise God. And the same Christ that stopped that storm, the same Christ that was in the Apostle Paul that stopped these harassments is in you, praise God. And you're in Christ. Amen. Amen. Isn't that an awesome thought? Hallelujah. So when you speak, it's God speaking through you. That is, if you're, if you're using your faith, yielding to his grace, then that's Jesus speaking through you to that storm. Praise God. Amen. It's got to obey you. Same as it did when Jesus spoke to it. Why? Because you're in him. I said, you're in him. You're in him. Praise God. Now look at verse uh, 21. For he, God, hath made him Jesus to be sin for us. 
glory to God, who knew no sin, whew, thank you, Lord, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Wow. Think about that now. Jesus came to the earth, lived a sinless life, went to the cross as the perfect sinless lamb of God. There he shed his blood and died. And the third day he was raised from the dead. Did all of that, performed a perfect sacrifice in order to save and deliver imperfect people. Would you send your son to do something like that? God did. I said, God did. Wow. So, not only did he take your sin and pour in us his righteousness, but his righteousness is what gives us the right to use his authority. See, because he made you righteous. See, the word righteous means right standing. It also means rights. So not only did he take your sin, his righteousness gives you the right, praise God, to use his name, to use your faith that he gave you, and to use his authority, praise God. You have the right to do it, hallelujah. Oh, glory. So our faith, go to Romans chapter 3. Our faith, right before we receive communion, our faith is not in what we did, it's in what he did. Now look at verse uh, 24. Being justified freely by his grace, listen, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation, that means substitution, through faith, say through faith, through faith in his blood. Go oh, glory to God to declare his righteousness, the remission of sins, not just the forgiveness of sins, but for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. So, faith in his blood is what has made you righteous. Amen. Faith in his blood is what gives you the right to use your authority, to use your faith, which he gave you, and to use his name, praise God, and to speak to storms, amen, and to receive all of God's promises, including, but not excluding, the blessing. Woo, glory to God. I said, glory to God. Now, now go to 1 Corinthians, please, the 11th chapter. 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. And uh, let's begin reading in uh, verse uh, 23. For I received of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you, that the same Lord Jesus, or that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he's betrayed, he took bread. When he'd given thanks, he broke it and said, Take heed, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. In other words, do this in remembrance of what I did for you. Verse 25, after the same manner also, he took the cup when he'd supped, supped saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of, of me or, or what I did for you. Verse 26, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, say if I would judge myself. If we would judge ourselves, it doesn't say to judge your neighbor, does it? If we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Now then. The Greek word there for judge means examine. We're to examine our hearts before we partake of the cracker and drink the cup. Amen. And one of the main areas 
where the enemy tries to trip us up in as Christians is in the area of our love walk. Brother Hagin always said this, if my, if my faith is not working, first place I check is, am I walking in love? And sometimes when offenses come, people aren't always quick to take care of them. They let those offenses fester. And an offense will become unforgiveness. Then it becomes resentment. Then it becomes bitterness. It says in the book of Hebrews, the 12th chapter, don't let a root of bitterness spring up within you. That comes out of the curse. So I'm going to deal with that right now. Sometimes bitterness gets into families and just gets passed down. Well, let it stop with your household. The curse comes no further. Why? You know who you are. You know what you have in Christ. You know what the Word of God says. Amen? Amen. So be quick to forgive when something happens. Somebody tells you off, unloads on you, mistreats you, whatever it is. Don't take offense to it. Don't spread it around. Don't go on Facebook. Say, I love you, Pastor. Now, there are many hindrances to our faith. But unforgiveness is the only one Jesus ever mentioned. Which means it's the main one. And if you read 2 Corinthians, I believe it's the second chapter, unforgiveness gives Satan the advantage. Forgiveness gives you the advantage. So make sure you walk in love. If someone offends you, be quick to forgive. Quick to forgive. Be mean to the devil. Be sweet to people. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over the curse of bitterness. I break that power in the name of Jesus. That forgiveness can flow. That healing can flow. That mercy can flow. That your power can flow. For unforgiveness, you told me, weakens our authority. Thank you, that force, that power has been broken in the name of Jesus. And so we examine our hearts now. We examine our hearts of any wrong attitudes, any strife, anything like that that needs to be taken care of. We repent of that right now to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. We want to make sure our hearts are right before you, Father. That we're walking in the love of God. That we love you with all of our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength. And that we love people. And that we serve you by serving people. And do so with a joyful attitude in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for it. Just say, I receive. I receive. I, you, you receive? Amen. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over these elements. that be prepared by these precious ones for this morning. And I want to thank you, Father, for the cracker. We're about to partake of it. It represents Jesus' body, which is broken for our healing. So if anybody is healing this morning, use the cracker as a point of contact in which to uh, release your faith to receive your healing. I want to thank you for the cup, Lord, rep which represents Jesus' blood, which was shed for the remission of our sins, Lord. That we, that we may have total redemption, total deliverance, from the curse of the law. I want to thank you, Father, for these things. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Amen. Now then, you may go ahead and uh, form a line to my left or to your right and go through the uh, line here and receive the elements. It's, it's self-serve this morning. Uh, receive the elements and uh, please return to your pew before you partake and we will do so in uh, unison. Praise God. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank <laughs> oh, <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. You have a song, brother? Okay. Uh, all right. I thought so. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Everybody's welcome to receive, to receive communion. Everybody's welcome. Just as long as you're born again, 
You're in. You're in the family. Amen? You're in the family. And God welcomes you, and we welcome you. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Just remain in your pew, and we'll partake here together in just a minute. I want to make sure everyone's been served that would like to be served. We discern his body was broken for our healing this morning. We also discern the members of the body of Christ. We discern the different churches, the different denominations, Lord. We're determined, Father, committed to the love walk, to be forgiving, to be sweet, to be kind, to be loving like Jesus. Even to our critics, Lord. Glory to God. With your help. We'll do this thing you called us to do, Lord. We thank you for it. You may partake of the cracker. Thank you for Jesus' blood, Lord, which was shed for the remission of our sins. We aren't just forgiven. Our sins have been removed. They've been blotted out. The blood has washed away all of our sins, made us whole again. We're as clean as a as snow. We're as clean as Jesus. But we stand this morning before you in his righteousness. We thank you for it, Lord. Oh, we thank you for it, Father. Oh, we love you, Father. We praise you for the blood of Jesus. For the blood of Jesus. Thank you now, Lord. We are forgiven. We examined our hearts. Made sure there's nothing in there that would block your power, that would block our faith, would stop the blessing, Lord, from working in our lives, making sure things are right between, between us, between, between us and you, between us and others in the body of Christ, not, have, not, not harboring any ill will, no unforgiveness in our hearts, Father, we thank you for, we've been cleansed of all that now in the name of Jesus. You may partake of the cup.